bodies as symptoms. These vulnerabilities are the vulnerabilities of our cells. Everything that is coming to the surface, everything that is um, on the surface showing up as symptoms really are the vulnerabilities of the cells. So the goal would be to look at what are the cells recording? What are the cells um, playing out? What is the program of the cells creating that we now see on the surface? And a lot of that dictation is, um, is done by the health of the environment. It's done by the nervous system that is informing the cells of what's going on. And so here it's, it's kind of interesting how when clients come, they kind of tend to come in clumps. And um, again, I had a small grouping of people where they came with random various symptoms. Um, one was about headaches and, and terrible face pain, dealing with sinuses. And um, another one was, was talking about just extreme belching. And um, another one was about skin conditions and how the IBS, how their, how their um, IBS was acting out, having a little flare. And so here's the interesting thing with that is the common denominator was not what you would typically think. So if these people are coming into your office and you are looking over their symptoms, it's very easy to just kind of take that medical view, which is not what we do with naturopathy. Our job is not to, to diagnose a problem, but um, it's so easy to just look at, oh, here's the symptom, I'm sneezing. What's, you know, what, what do we do for the sneezing? Well, let's take a decongestant. And, and it's so different how we look at that. So we're looking at the sneezing and I'm automatically thinking, well, what's behind the sneezing? <laughs> pull, pull back the curtain of the Wizard of Oz and, and let me know what's behind the sneezing. I want to know what's causing that. I don't want to just stop it. And so it's very easy. These, these hard symptoms that these clients were talking about um, it's what they were really focused on. And it's very easy to just want to want to help them get relief in whatever way possible. And of course, we hope that that happens too. But the first part is we really have to, if we want, if we want to make change in that for the long term and not just, you know, have them buying the decongestant all the time, um, we have to, we have to do what I call the phase one is signify the story. We have to we have to fill in the gaps and that might be looking at assessments. It might be looking at lab work. It certainly is going to include a nutrition analysis, getting right down to the nitty gritty of the numbers and seeing what your, what your minerals and nutrients are doing and how they're working with the cells. And it, it's coming up with a timeline to see what stories the nervous system recorded. And interestingly enough, all of them pinned back to a trigger of dental work. And they didn't think it had anything to do with what their current symptoms were, especially the GI symptoms, especially the IBS. Never, you know, she never thought that it could have been her teeth. Um, belching, why would we look at the teeth? And so it was very interesting because all of these could pin back to a known trigger, which was dental work and or dental problem and um, the use of antibiotics. Pretty pretty significantly, pretty recently. So when we're able to do kind of do this signify phase, we can see all the pieces of the story. We can see what the nervous system is directing to the cells. We can see what the cells have recorded. We can see how they're interacting with the whole body. And <laughs> the fun part about that is we have little microbiomes all over our body. The mouth also has its own little ecosystem and all throughout the body a large part of how communication happens is through the communication of the microbiomes. You know, we've heard about the gut brain connection. Well, it doesn't just, it doesn't just travel physically through the nerves, but how does that travel happen? What communication, what messages are communicated? And a lot of it is from the microbiomes communicating with each other. They are living beings. They do move. They do create a frequency, which is a vibration. And that signifies to the rest of the body. The nervous system picks up on that. And every cell in the body within seconds knows exactly what's happening and what kind of danger they have to prepare for, what kind of stressors they're under. And it's why we cannot separate one part of the body from the next. And so the, there was an impact with the dentistry. There was an impact with the dental problem. There was an impact with the treatment that was used with antibiotics. Um, and that doesn't necessarily have to mean those things were a bad thing. It's just that they did happen. They were an episode in each of these people's lives. So they did need to be included in the whole spectrum 
of, of what was going on and for us to figure out what are the best things that we can do to help balance these bodies out. And so um, learning about those microbiomes has, has it, it's just never ceased to amaze me. It's like these tiny little living <laughs> living beings, like we are the giant universe and it's all these little mini planets and all of these inhabitants that live on these planets within our body. And so um, that's, how I, that's how I see it anyway. I see this as this whole universe. Um, but, but one of these things is our goal really is that we are trying to create conditions for health to exist. We're not necessarily, you know, going after a disease or forcing health to happen. We're just, we're forming an environment that is conducive to health. This practice is called salutogenesis, where we're looking for health rather than searching for the cause of disease. We create a reason for there to be health. And so that thought is what helped me form the four phases of what I do to help take people from start to finish. We, we signify support, structure, streamline to get the body through everything that is, that is a piece to their puzzle. And one of the things of forming an environment conducive to health is that there has to be a, a supportive, the, the planet has to be supported. <laughs> there has to be helpful inhabitants on the planet. So if you look at the mouth, the mouth has to be this healthy, conducive environment also. And there needs to be, there's, there's obviously definitely bacteria there. Otherwise, why would we have tooth decay? Why would we have bad breath? Why would we have, you know, coatings on the tongue? There's obviously bacteria there. And so to have this healthy biome, this healthy ecosystem, we have to have um, multiple healthy, happy uh, species of bacteria. If you think about it, you swallow and you breathe and you eat, and you use your teeth and gums every day. In fact, they've, they've averaged that it's, what was it, approximately 140 billion bacteria and fungi are swallowed down into the gut every day. So it's got to make you wonder how many of your gut issues really are coming from the environment of the mouth. So in this particular person, um, one of the three, there was um, um, H. pylori was also present. So she came in with that diagnosis. And again, it was not compared to the teeth, like that, the, the, the uh, factors of the dental problem, the, the antibiotic treatment that was used, none of that was really taken into consideration. But if you think about it, that microbiome is now disturbed. There is infection there. There is bad bugs there from the infection. And taking the antibiotics is going to change the pH of the stomach. It's going to change the microbiome everywhere. It's going to kill the good bugs, which means that the bad bugs are going to be on the rise. And it just opens the door to other pathogens. And so as I'm following the dots, I'm kind of connecting the dots, it would be normal for something like H. pylori to happen as well. And that's going to cause symptoms of its own, like the belching that was the reason for coming in. And so um, what we have to do is, is kind of take it back, uh, you know, unroll that snowball a little bit and go backwards in time um, and, and look at what all could be impacting what the person is is coming in with. I think another thing that's interesting with teeth is that biological complications, meaning that something else is happening in the body, it occur like after you have after you have dental problems or dental work done, it occurs in over sixty nine percent of cases after having cavities or canals implants. Um, the teeth definitely do affect other parts of your body. It's called the terrain theory, and there could be symptoms all over the place, all over the body from what your teeth and your gums and the dysbiosis of the bacteria in your mouth um, are like. Things like allergies and chronic sinus infections and post-nasal drip if you're a real phlegmy person in the morning, if you sound really nasally when you talk, if you tend to lose your voice, but even insomnia and ADHD, bad breath and IBS, and we know cardiovascular disease has been linked to teeth, but eczema and skin conditions, they're even relating it now to anxiety and depression. So um, harmful bacteria are really being studied a lot. Um, harmful bacteria in the gut can disrupt blood sugar, which makes diabetes more difficult to manage. And certain strains of bacteria can even elevate blood pressure. So it is wise to start looking at the whole terrain of the body, the whole environment. Is it conducive to health? If it were, we probably wouldn't have the symptoms that you're showing up with. So 
I like to use um, certain strains of bacteria, good bacteria, good healthy fighter bacteria, and that's part of what we can do to, to create an environment that's conducive to health, especially in the mouth and how it would affect the rest of the body. But if you take a encapsulated probiotic that doesn't open up until, you, until it's in the intestines, how is that helping your mouth? So I like to use a soft chew. It's a soft chew melt away so that it's, it's like a therapy in the mouth where you're spending time with the bacteria engaging with the tissues. And the results of that have been, have been really helpful from people saying that um, they feel like their digestion is improved with that. They feel like the sinus conditions are improved with that. Um, I've even heard reports of inflammation being improved with that and, and sinus and headache issues. So in, in any case, we, we have to keep all of those soft tissue environments healthy and happy. And we need those inhabitants um, for part of the puzzle. Now, if we're looking at the whole body system, it's interesting to note that teeth are, I mean, they're bone, they're hard, they're, they're, they talk about kind of strength and force and digestibility and ability to take the outside world into the inner, inner world of the body. And so looking at concepts and looking at kind of the metaphysical relationship with teeth um, some interesting things there are teeth are meant to, you know, chew, break down in um, our old primary primal instincts. It, teeth were for chewing and fighting. And so some of the metaphysical insights into tooth problems could be a feeling of incapability of defending yourself. It could be the tough side of you. So teeth are really tough and hard. It could be the tough side of you and how you handle pressure, how you are under pressure. Um, it could have metaphysical connotations like, are you holding in words of judgment or condemnation or criticism? Or are you speaking criticism often? Um, this is true for job problems as well. So using that timeline, looking at the physical body to signify the events, but also signify the whole picture by looking at what else could be coming into play here that would be manifesting through the experience of the teeth. So that's part of all kind of bringing that all together. So where do you go from here? Um, if this sounds interesting to you, I would definitely look up and do studies on microbiome. I would look up um, bioterrain theory versus germ theory. I would look up biological dentistry. You might want to um, consider the products that you're using in your mouth. You know, interesting to consider if we're using Listerine and mouthwash, it's known to kill bacteria, right? That's why we use it to kill bad breath. Um, however, you're killing all the good stuff too. And so some of the products that we use, some of the ingredients in toothpaste, you might want to just look into, look into some of the natural toothpaste and see what makes sense for you. Um, I like to use the, the Melt Away 2, um, which all three of these clients are now using. And I like to talk about using some natural tooth products, and then using some like xylitol gums or mints throughout the day can be a good way to keep cleaning the teeth throughout the day and, and encouraging good bacterial growth without, without harming, harming those good guys, kind of keeping everything in balance. We do do dental bioenergetic assessments also, which is a great hand-holding partnership in, um, in collaboration with your dentist because it's not just what you see on the x-rays, it's, you know, the, the, the vibration, the experience of the whole mouth environment. So if you are having symptoms that you haven't had any resolution to, it might behoove you to look at the teeth. Give yourself a, a little, a little examination in your mouth and, and see how you're, how you're feeling about what's going on inside your mouth, what you have experienced with your with your dentist and the whole tooth picture. I'm going to put a link in the description um, that can lead you to the, the blog post that has the links for the supplement, the melt away um, that I like to use. So I'm gonna leave you with some positive affirmations. So if we wanna just take a few deep breaths, think about all that you've heard today, weed out all of the stuff that doesn't make sense to you, Pull out any of the seeds or the aha moments 
that did make sense to you and sound right for your picture right now. Know that you are perfectly created. You are a perfect being with everything that you need for everything that you need. You have a perfect opportunity to heal. I'm providing a perfect suggestion that there are other ways that you can add to your healing environment. This can be easy. It doesn't have to be scary. You have the perfect innate ability to restore balance in your body, especially when provided the resources to do so. I want you to receive those suggestions. Let them formulate as health inside your body. And I want to thank you for joining the conversation. I encourage you to keep having conversations of your own and go out and cause health in your world.